Hello and welcome to a new game from CCC 11's round 2. Here are the standings after about 26 games each. Some have more games, some have less because of the odd number of uh, participants. Lila is clear first, ahead of Stockfish and Lilenstein, and look who's in fourth place. The development version of Lila, codenamed T60. Now, some people said that they're not very impressed with uh, T60 so far because of all these draws that uh, she played here, but I have to disagree, I think her results are absolutely spectacular considering this uh, tough field. Now we have to take into consideration that back in the day when T40 was in development, the field wasn't this strong. The competition is also getting stronger and stronger and um, her fourth place here so far is, is actually very, very good. So let's see now a game played by T60 against Toflace. This is game 101. And they play the Sicilian with E4, C5. And now after knight F3, we have G6, the hyper accelerated dragon. It has a very, very cool name. Now, back in the day, people played the dragon variation of the Sicilian, which is with D6. And then white opens the position, knight takes. And now knight f6, knight c3, and g6. So this is the famous dragon variation of the Sicilian. And the point of this move, knight f6, is to uh, force white to play knight c3 and prevent white from playing c4, getting into the dreaded Morotzi bind structure. People feared playing against the Morotzi bind because it cramps black's position and it doesn't give them the sharp play that they were aiming for. But over time, players developed better and better ways to cope with the Moro Tibine structure. And at some point, they had this idea of not playing knight f6 at all and allowing the Moro Tzi. So here after knight takes on d4, instead of knight f6, they played g6 directly, trying to place this bishop on this very strong long diagonal faster. And now if white plays c4, then fine, then they will play a model t bind structure, which is a bit harder to play against, but is definitely not worse for black. And on the other hand, if white wants to play the Sicilian, then he also wants to maybe play some sharp game, and then they might avoid the model t bind, because then the game becomes a maneuvering game, and that's a completely different ball game than a sharp Sicilian. So people started playing the accelerated dragon, but at some point they had also an idea of playing g6 on move 2. So here after uh, e4, c5, knight f3, why not play g6 immediately and have this bishop on g7 even faster? And this is how the hyper accelerated dragon came into being. The game now continued with d4 and then bishop g7. So here of course the main move is c takes d4 as in uh, any other Sicilian and then bishop g7 or knight c6, but black can play bishop g7 here immediately. But this now allows white, if he wants to, to avoid trading those pawns and close the center with d5. And now we reach the end of the book, and Lila went actually for d5 here. And now we have this Benoni kind of position, but this is not a Benoni at all, because in the Benoni white plays c4, and then black tries to uh, attack that pawn with b5 and weaken this pawn. And uh, in the Benoni, uh, also this diagonal is much weaker for white. Whereas here in the hyper accelerated dragon, white can maybe play c3 at some point and blunt this bishop on this diagonal. So now the game continued with knight f6 attacking this pawn. And here e5 might be tempting since uh, this pawn is defended and the knight can take it. And uh, knight e4 is not, not that great because of bishop d3. But black can play knight g4 and attack this pawn. And it's very difficult to defend this one because after bishop f4, black has d6. And this pawn is pinned to b2 and the rook on a1. And uh, in this position, black is actually a bit better. Now, if I wouldn't analyze this game with an engine, then I would think that taking here is completely out of the question, but actually Stockfish says that pawn takes on d6 here in this position is white's best move and allowing pawn takes on b2. After which white can play knight d2 
And now if the bishop retreats, then uh, white just uh, exchanged his b2 pawn for black's d6 pawn and the white is fine. And if black continues grabbing the material, then um, after castles, h3 and knight back to f6, white has some compensation because the dark squares in black's camp are rather weak and maybe white can um, take advantage of it and uh, made the black king on g7. So e5 here maybe is not that bad, but is definitely better for black. So that's why instead of e5, Lila played here knight c3, defending the pawn. And now we have d6. Now that the knight is here and uh, the rook is not hanging, maybe e5 is stronger. So we have d6, stopping that. And in this position, bishop e2 and uh, bishop b5 check are played the most. But in this one, we have a4. And now castles and bishop c4. Lila's main idea is to play e5 at some point, And then this pawn needs defense. In the reverse game, t60 played bishop g4 here and eventually took out this knight and um, managed to draw. In this one, we have knight a6. And now castles knight c7. And in this position that was played a couple of times by grandmasters, the main moves are h3 to stop bishop g4, bishop f4, and even rook a3. So all these moves have been played. In this one, Lila played none of these, and she came up with a novelty. She played here queen d3, which makes a lot of sense because it uh, strengthens this diagonal and makes a6, b5 much more difficult to achieve. And the queen also defends e4. Stoflace played here b6 and he wants to get in this uh, b5 break. Now if he tries to rush it with a6 then Lila can play a5 and now b5 is not that great because it leaves black with this isolated pawn on a6. So if Stoflace wants to, to get in a good variation of the b5 break then he has to baby step it and he has to play first b6 and only then a6 and b5. Lila continued now with h3, stopping this bishop from getting here. And now after a6, Lila played bishop g5, connecting the rooks. b5 now is uh, not that good because Stoflace would lose that pawn. We have bishop d7, preparing b5. And now e5, finally t60 gets in this break. And uh, taking this pawn is not so great because then after knight e5, this bishop is attacked and b5 would uh, lead to some complications favorable to white. Um, he would win this pawn on b5. So what can black do then? Well, if the knight has to move back, then this is definitely a, a good outcome for white in this opening. So instead, Stoflace counterattacked immediately here with b5, hitting this bishop. And now we have a takes b, a takes b, and now pawn takes on f6. And the point here is that if now Stoflace would take on c4 to hit the queen, then Lila could also take on e7 and hit this queen. And getting the queens off is unavoidable here because uh, this rook is also hanging here with check. So Stoflace has no choice, has to take on d3. But now after Lila takes here and the rook recaptures, Lila would win the exchange by bishop taking here. After rook takes and pawn takes, white has a much better position. So b takes on c4 doesn't work. Stoflace took on f6 and now he's hitting both of these bishops. And Lila played here now bishop f4. So she chose to, to save the dark squared bishop in order to attack this pawn. And now before b takes on c4, we have first bishop f5 hitting the queen. We have now rook takes, knight takes, and now queen back to d2. And now Stoflace took back the piece and we have equal material. But now came knight b5 hitting this pawn and that cannot be defended. We have bishop e4 and now bishop takes on d6 hitting the rook. Rook e1 and now queen d7 attacking the knight. Lila returned the knight to c3 and uh, she's attacking e4. They now exchanged a pair of bishops. And now after queen d8, Lila played queen e2 threatening knight f6 with check and taking this rook. At this point, Lila is evaluating this already at plus 2.2 for white. We have rook e7. If now knight takes here with check, then the bishop uh, recaptures and uh, defends the rook. We have d6 now, rook e6, and queen takes 
on c4. And Stoflace, of course, would like to play here f5 and then uh, take back the pawn on d6. But f5 now would fail because of knight g5, hitting the rook and also f7. And uh, white would win here. So Stoflace has to prepare this and he played first knight b6 to chase the queen away from that diagonal. And now he played f5. And now we have knight takes on c5, rook takes on e1, knight takes, and now queen takes on d6. And Stoflace took back one of the pawns, but Lila has two connected passers here on the queen side, ready to roll. We have knight d3 now to defend this pawn on b2. And here Lila has already ideas with c4 and c5. So we have knight d7, knight f3, and now queen c7 hitting c2, but this knight needs defense. We have now g3, knight f8, and now c3, simply c3. c4 would have been a good move, but Lila preferred to move the pawn only to c3. We have now queen d8 and knight e5, and this knight is quite strong here on e5. It's attacking f7. Chasing this knight away would be a big, big mistake because of queen c4 check, of course. And if king here, then uh, knight f7 and white wins. What is White's best move here in this position? Pause the video if you would like to find it yourself. If you thought about taking this queen with check, well, that is a good move, but it's not the best move in the position because here White has a mate in two with knight a6 check. This is a double check, so the king has to move and then White can mate with queen g8. So f6, of course, a big mistake. And f7 is under pressure. We have now h5 and now queen c4 attacking here. Queen f6 and now h4, knight e6, queen c8 check, knight f8, queen c6 going for a queen exchange. Of course, if Lila could exchange all the pieces, then uh, these pawns could uh, move up the board unhindered. We have queen d8 avoiding the trade. Queen c4 now attacking f7 again. Queen f6, knight f3, knight e6. Queen c8 check, knight back, knight f4, queen d6, and now b4. And slowly these pawns are rolling up the board. Bishop h6 now, attacking this knight twice. But after Lila's queen e8, trying to win a pawn by taking here twice, would lose the game again because of knight e5 hitting f7. And uh, the queen is not in position to defend that. If he plays queen c1 check, then after king g2, there's nothing to do, f7 will fall. And um, if queen h6, then after queen check and king h8, white can just simply push the pawns and there's nothing black can do here. If the knight moves, then knight g6 check wins the queen. And if queen g7, then uh, Lila could just exchange the, uh, the queens and then play b6. And this knight can't uh, go stop the pawn because d7 is covered. So bishop takes on f4 is not that great. So we have bishop g7 and now knight g5 hitting f7 again. Queen d1 check, king g2 and now queen b3 defending f7. And here now after b5, the queen of course can't take on c3 because f7 is hanging. But neither can the bishop because after the bishop takes, Lila would have knight e6 shielding the f7 pawn and uh, Lila could take on f7 next and actually mate because after f takes on e6, queen f7, queen f8 mates the black king. So bishop c3 not possible. We have bishop h6 now and queen e5, knight d7 and now to queen d5 hitting f7 again. The queen trade is uh, unavoidable. We have queen takes, knight takes and now bishop f8, knight f3, bishop g7, king f1, king f8. And now king e2 and both kings are trying to get to those pawns. We have knight c5 and now c4. King e8, king e3, knight b3, king e2, knight c5, knight b4, king e7 and now knight g5. Here knight a6 probably wins for white because the knight cannot be taken because then the pawn is unstoppable. And uh, if uh, the knight moves away then maybe Lila's king would uh, find an easier way to the pawns. But instead of uh, knight a6, Lila played knight g5. And now we have bishop a1, knight c6 check, king e8, knight f3, f6, knight b4, knight e6, and uh, some more moves trying to improve the position. 
f4, bishop b2, knight b4, bishop c3, and now knight d3. Finally, the knight is in position to support c5 at some point. We have knight d4 check, and now king d1. And after king c8, Lila played knight b3, attacking this knight. She's using tactics to simplify the position and uh, allow her king to move up the board. We have knight takes on b3 and now king c2, hitting both pieces. Knight d4 check, king takes on c3 and now knight d2 check, king b4 and Stoflace wins a pawn. But these pawns are just too strong. We have b6, knight e4 and now knight c5. And at this point, of course, Stoflace can't trade the knights on c5 because then uh, these pawns are just too strong. Instead, he's trying to create a pass pawn himself. But now after knight takes on e4, f takes on e4, f takes, f takes, and h takes on g5, Lila's pawns are uh, unstoppable. Stoflaze also has uh, two passed pawns, but unfortunately none of them can promote. If this pawn moves, then uh, the king can stop it, and uh, the h pawn is just too slow, because Lila queens first here, and then uh, she can pick up this pawn. So at this point, instead of h4, we have e3, but the king can easily stop that pawn. We have also h4, g6, king d7, g7, and Lila will queen next. We have king d2, h3, and now finally a queen on the board. h2, check, king c8, queen c6, check, and now the queen comes back, and Lila picks up both pawns, and after that she's proceeding to mate the black king, but she first gives up both of those pawns, because those are not needed anymore, and then she goes up with the king, and uh, this will be a mate very, very soon. A very nice game played by little Lila in this eccentric opening. In the end, I would like to thank to Leon Coleman for his uh, $5 contribution to my channel. And of course, I would also like to thank to René, Adolf, Barry, Mark, and everyone else who donated. Also, check out my store. You can find t-shirts, mugs, hoodies, and all sorts of stuff there. You can check two of my other videos on the right. Please subscribe, like, and share, and see you soon. Bye-bye.